It's no secret that Oklahoma is landlocked. But you might be surprised to find out being landlocked doesn't keep it from having a seaport. Okay, technically it's a river port, but functionally it gives Oklahoma goods and businesses access to ocean transport, and that's an incredible asset. Welcome to the Port of Catoosa. It's located outside of Tulsa, off the Verdigris River. That river flows into the Arkansas River, which flows into the Mississippi River, which goes to the Port of New Orleans on the Gulf Coast. That means the Port of Catoosa connects Oklahoma to the rest of the world and brings us the benefits of shipping by water. Sheila Shook, Director of Workforce and Education for Tulsa Ports, gave us the background and showed us around. The story doesn't start with transportation, barges, or freight. It starts with floods. The Arkansas River Valley was prone to flooding, and some of the floods were disastrous. A particularly catastrophic flood in 1943 prompted the Rivers and Harbors Act in 1946. One of the provisions of that law was to provide funding for a system that would not only provide flood control on the Arkansas River, it would make it navigable through most of Oklahoma and all of Arkansas. Ultimately named the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System, or MCARNS for short, it not only provides flood control and navigation, but it also provides conservation areas, recreation areas, and hydroelectric power. It's 445 miles long and goes from Montgomery Point on the Mississippi River in Arkansas to the Port of Catoosa here in Oklahoma. The Port of Catoosa is the most inland port on the M. Carnes, making it the first port or the last port, depending on which way you're going. Now, the elevation difference between Montgomery Point and the Port of Catoosa is about 420 feet. So M. Carnes uses a series of 18 locks and dams to provide a staircase of water steps to get from Catoosa to the Mississippi River. If you want to see how these locks work, check out my video on the Sioux locks. We will leave a link in the video description. What all of that means is that since 1971, Oklahoma has access to the advantages of shipping and receiving freight by water, including ocean-going routes through the Port of New Orleans. Its opening was such a big deal, President Nixon came to the dedication. Lower shipping costs coming in mean that the farmer pays less for his fertilizer, machinery, and other supplies. And lower shipping costs going out mean that the farmer can pocket more of the market price of his crops and livestock. And that way, farm income is boosted twice, and the benefits extend across America and around the world to everyone who depends on the beef and the wheat the cotton, the soybeans, all the other products of Mid-America's agriculture. Let's look at some of the advantages of river transport. River cargo typically takes place on a barge. One barge can carry as much cargo as 15 rail cars or 60 semi-trucks. Efficiencies of all transport modes have increased in recent years, and comparisons must take into account lots of variables but one gallon of diesel moves freight a lot farther by barge than it can by rail or truck. This particular comparison is from a 2018 report by the state of Oklahoma. The result is that freight can be shipped cheaper by barge. 90% of the barge traffic through the Port of Catoosa carries agricultural goods, and the amount of products going out versus in is about even. Lower freight costs allow farmers to be more competitive in the global market, selling their commodities to more customers at higher prices. On the flip side, they can receive the inputs they need, like fertilizer, into the port at a lower cost too. While non-ag products only make up 10% by volume, 
their impact by dollar amount is much greater than that. That is because many of these goods are higher value items, everything from raw steel to sophisticated refinery equipment. As we go through the port, each one of these rolls of steel weighs 25 tons, that's 50,000 pounds. You can only put one roll on a truck. You can put four in a rail car, but we can bring those rolls of steel in 60 rolls of steel at a time. So that steel, you might wonder why should I care, right? But that steel is directly connected to manufacturing in this area. Manufacturing is directly connected to our great jobs that we have in this area, which is directly connected to people being able to live here in Oklahoma. So there's a company called Whirlpool. They're just up the road in Owasso. They make uh, stoves or ranges. We've had their corporate people stand right here in this office and tell us if it wasn't for the waterway, we would not be here. That's 2,500 jobs that wouldn't be here because they couldn't afford to bring in one roll of steel or four rolls of steel. You couldn't buy their stove or range. They couldn't pay their people. So the waterway allows companies to come to this area. Shipping by barge also allows oversized freight to be moved. Some cargo is simply too big for normal rail or trucking operations, but often that cargo can easily be transported on water. As you can tell, the economic impact of the port goes way beyond freight cost savings. And the deep economic impact can be told over a broad range of stories. Everything from molasses from the Caribbean coming to Oklahoma to be added to animal feed, to highly specialized environmental control systems make their way through the port. This hub of commerce benefits us all as consumers, workers, investors, and citizens. And it is quite a hub. More than a spot to load and unload goods, the port is a 2,500 acre industrial park, home to 70 different companies, and it's designated as a foreign trade zone. Each year, the port handles around 1,000 barges carrying a total of 2 million tons of cargo. For most of that cargo, the barge covers only part of its journey. Being able to get transferred to rail or semi-trucks is referred to as intermodal, meaning the freight can take different modes of transportation. All right, here we are. This is the beginning or the end, depending on your perspective, of the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System. So this is what I showed you in the pictures. This is a Slackwater Harbor, about a mile and three quarter. It is man-made. So what you see across the channel over there is our dry bulk facility. Those funny looking dome shaped buildings, those are used for dry storage. So they unload the barges and it goes by conveyor belt over to the storage domes or to the A-frame. Now more than likely, the trucks and rail cars that are over there picking up dry fertilizer, they would have come in full of wheat or soybean that they sold at the grain elevator. And now they're gonna come over here and pick up that dry fertilizer before they go back out to their farm or co-op. So the dry fertilizer comes in as an import by barge and export by truck and rail. The wheat and soybean come in as an import by truck and rail goes out as an export by barge. And did you use the term slack water? Did mm -hmm. I understand what's slack, slack water? water mean? Means that it's not flowing through. Oh, okay. So it stops, it stays right here steady. So there's no current going, going through it. Gotcha. So like if you're at Port Muskogee, you're gonna be on the Arkansas River. So the water flows through there all the time and our water doesn't do that. The port averages a thousand semi-trucks a day and also has its own internal railroad line that connects it to an outside rail line serviced by BNSF. Right here, they're loading these rail cars full of dry fertilizer. So you can kind of look a little bit on the ground and see some of that white, see it looks like kind of like salt. That's dry fertilizer, uh, specifically called urea. So that, dry fertilizer would have come in 
in the barge and then they unloaded it, it went by conveyor belt and it's in one of those storage domes over there and now they're filling up those rail cars. Now those rail cars came in full of wheat or soybean, I don't know which one. They were, they did a belly dump over there at one of the grain elevators and then they brought them around here so they could fill up with fertilizer. The companies located at the port cover a huge range of products, food packaging, heat exchangers, oil field equipment, ag products, roofing products, truck bodies, chemical manufacturing, steel suppliers, lumber distribution, electronics, heavy fabrication, compressors, fishing products, asphalt, glass fabrication, and more. Next, we saw the main dock. That crane I showed you in the picture. It, okay, so the red thing, you probably go, yeah, that's a crane, right? But the blue thing, do you think that's a crane? Hmm, doesn't really look like a crane, does it? So they call it an overhead traveling crane, a bridge crane. Sometimes they even call it a gantry crane. I'll show you, we'll get, the good thing is they're not working right now, so we can get really close. That's where the crane operator sits. So the crane is the part that goes across like this, like this, and it moves out over the rails. In addition to the main dock, there is a low water dock, which is good for unloading specialty cargo. When we visited the low water dock, we got to visit a towboat that was waiting for its load to be ready. Towboats are different than tugboats. We will link a separate video that explains all of that. They have uh, their living quarters, they have uh, what they call their galley or their kitchen. So they take everything that they need with them for their trip. What is important to know for this video is that tow boats are used to push the barges up and down the river. Several barges are usually lashed together and can be pushed by one tow boat. Back at the education center at the port offices, there is a tow boat named the Charlie Border on display. It's open to explore and features lots of self-guided information to help you learn about tow boats. Of course, they offer lots of other learning resources about the MCARNs and river shipping too. We've traveled through this area of Oklahoma many times and seeing the waterway signs and the barges has always sparked lots of questions for us. We were grateful to get answers and a better understanding of how Oklahoma is connected to the rest of the world by this waterway. And we are grateful that you joined us on this learning adventure. Please check out our other learning adventures, and if you like what you see, know that every time you like, comment, or subscribe, it helps our channel. Special thanks to Sheila Shook and the Tulsa Port of Catoosa, not only for taking the time to teach us about the port, but for your work in maximizing the benefits of this valuable resource. It was great to get a peek at how we all benefit from having it. See you on our next adventure!